Hi boys and girls, I am here to read you chapter 13 of The Doll People, but first I have a joke for you. What's black and white and black and white and black and white? A penguin rolling down a hill. <laughs> Get it? Because it's black on one side, white on the other, and as it rolls, it, the color switches around. I thought you'd like that one. So tell it to your mom and dad. Have fun with that. So that is our joke for the day. I thought I'd also show you this. It's really cute. This is a little tiny doll that I got when I was a trip on a trip with my mom and dad when I was a little girl. And it was like a souvenir I bought for myself and then I bought a bunch for my friends. And I just thought it was really cute. I thought you'd want to see it. How cute. And now let's get set on the doll people. And the chapter is called Where's Papa? And the reason it is called that, if you remember from before, is that Papa was just taken away by the captain. Right? The cat? Let's see what happens. Now, this is the very beginning, and I see Annabelle. And if you look closely at Annabelle, she has a mad face. And Tiffany looks kind of sheepish, like, oh, I did something I shouldn't have done, maybe. So I'm wondering if Annabelle is mad at Tiffany and her family for being so careless about... Um, about doll state and about um, all those things that we know about how the dolls are supposed to act when people are around. Nora's room was a wreck and Annabelle was positive the doll code of honor had been broken. Things had been moved. Mom Funcraft had tracked grape soda across the rug. The paper flowers had been trampled. Dolls that didn't belong in the room were there. Worst of all, one doll was missing. Annabelle surveyed the room while the grown-ups re revived Mama Doll. She found that, that she was shaking, but not, she realized, with fear. Annabelle was furious. She couldn't remember the last time she had been quite so angry. So what does furious mean? Right, angry. Maybe she had never been this angry before. Papa had been carried off by the captain, and it was Tiffany's fault. Tiffany, with her don't worry about the captain and her he never catches us and I promise he's just playing, Annabelle glared at Tiffany. Show me your best glare. Right, good. Tiffany was talking quietly to Bobby and Bailey. When she glanced up and saw Annabelle looking at her, she joined her in the doorway. I'm, I'm sorry, Annabelle, she said. I really didn't think, I mean, the captain has never. We've been playing with him almost every night since we got here. Annabelle continued to glare at Tiffany. I, I know you're mad, Tiffany began to say. Annabelle nodded. Well, I said I was sorry. I know. Annabelle looked down at her feet. She looked across the room at, at the grown-ups. Then she let out a big sigh. Look, if you're just going to be mad, Tiffany, let's not fight, Annabelle interrupted her. Anyway, this is partly our fault. I mean, my family and I decided to come over here. You didn't force us to do that. No. So let's just do what we have to do together. And the first thing we have to do is put Nora's room back in order. Quickly, she added, looking at the clock on the wall, and and the rest of my fam oh, and the rest of my family has to go home. Then you and I will start looking for Papa. Sump, said Tiffany. Oh, remember that's the, the club that they found formed? Society for I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Alright, we have to keep going on. We run out of time. Exactly, said Annabelle. It's a good thing we're prepared for something like this. By now, Uncle Doll had helped Mama rise shakily to her feet. Papa saved me, he said breathlessly. He saved my life. Because remember that, that um, the captain was after Uncle Doll, and Papa distracted him, but then the captain grabbed Papa. He loves you, said Mama, your family. But I blamed you for, and then I lost my temper and moved out. Everyone quarrels, said Mama. Quarrel is another word for having arguments or fighting. Annabelle wanted to say, we never used to. But there wasn't time for a discussion. Come on, everybody, she said, shooing her family toward the door. We have a lot to do. And look at the time. Uncle Doll, Bobby, you take Mama home. And Mom and Dad, said Tiffany, you and Bailey clean up Nora's room. What are you going to do, Mama Doll asked Annabelle. Tiffany and I are going to look for Papa. Oh, but you can't, said Mama in a small voice. Yes, we can, and we are going to. Can we come, asked Bobby and Bailey. 
Nope, this is for girls only, said Tiffany. Besides, if too many people go looking, it will just get confusing, said Annabel. We're going we're just going to have to search quickly and come back before the Palmers wake up. Bailey and Bobby started to protest, but Annabelle said sternly, and we mean it, which she had never which she had heard Papa say a number of times. So the dolls hurried down the hallway. And remember the dolls, that's Annabelle's family. That's like their last name. And the fun crafts began to clean up. And Annabelle and Tiffany huddled briefly by the corner of Nora's bureau. And bureau is another word for dresser. Where shall we look first, asked Tiffany. Where would you look first if you knew a cat had taken a doll? It's a good idea. Yeah. Well, the captain might, might be nearby in Kate's parents' room, but I don't think we should go in there. At least not right now. That could be too risky. He could just as easily have run downstairs, said Tiffany. Maybe we should start there. Okay, agreed Annabelle. Annabelle and Tiffany searched the Palmer's dining room and kitchen before they got nervous about the time and returned to their homes. So they didn't find him yet. On her way across Kate's room, Annabelle did a quick check on, under the furniture to see whether the captain was hiding nearby with Papa, but he is, wasn't in sight. Any luck? called Mama as soon as she saw Annabelle. No. And there's a little picture of Annabelle and Tiffany. See them? The next day was Saturday, and at least one of the Palmers was home all day long, right? Because nobody goes to work, nobody goes to school. So could, could they search during the day on Saturday? No. Annabelle, stuck in the dollhouse, worried that Kate would peek inside and wonder why Papa was no longer seated at the table where she had left him the night before. Then she worried that Papa had been injured. He had, he, oh, had one of his arms or legs been smashed? Because remember, he's made out of china. Yeah. Had his head been smashed? Annabelle could do nothing but wait until bedtime when she and Tiffany could continue their search. Let me show you one other thing. See like a little figurine like this? And hear how it's glass? This is the kind of material that Annabelle's head would be made out of. Not her body part. That would probably be fabric. But her head, arms, and legs are all made out of china. And same with Papa. So, you know, this is the kind of material that can break because it's a kind of glass. I'll put it back. Um, that night, the first night without Papa, it was Uncle Doll who called. The coast is clear. When he had decided that the Palmer's house was dark and silent enough to mean that all the humans were fast asleep, Annabelle looked at him sitting in the parlor with Mama and Nanny and Bobby and baby Betsy. She took a picture of them with her mind. Then she made a dash for the stool and waiting in, and, and was waiting in the hall when Tiffany appeared. Yeah, so she's worried. So she looked at them and wanted to have that picture in her mind so she'd never forget what that looked like. Maybe she's worried that she might get taken. The girls made their way downstairs and searched the TV room, the front hallway, and Grandma Catherine's, Grandma Catherine's bathroom. They wanted to search in Grandma Catherine's bedroom, but were afraid. We'll have to... We'll save the worst rooms for last, said Tiffany. Tomorrow we'll search the living room. The girls had avoided the living room because the captain's bed was there. and But now Annabelle had an idea. Tiffany... I know I said I didn't want to go near the captain's bed, but I just thought, thought of something. Remember when Nora threw me downstairs and I landed on his bed? Yes. Well, I found a lot of stuff in the bed. Like what? A couple of Nora's plastic animals and a toy mouse and a doll Kate had made for Nora. So, said Tiffany, well, don't you see? Annabelle felt impatient. The captain hides little things in his bed. Maybe that's where he took Papa. And um, Tiffany gasped and put her hand to her mouth. Uh, and oh, Annabelle, I bet you're right. First thing tomorrow night, we'll search his bed. If he's not in it, said Annabelle. That is where I was thinking that he, that, that he had hid Papa in the bed. Let's see. When Annabelle and Tiffany met in the hallway the next night, Annabelle was cross, upset, angry, right? That's what cross means. The captain isn't on the end of Kate's bed, she told Tiffany. I thought you didn't like him to be there. I don't, but if he isn't there, then he might be sleeping on his bed. And if he's on his bed, we can't search it tonight. That's true. But he could be, be somewhere else in the house, Tiffany pointed out reasonably. So let's go downstairs and look. Annabelle and Tiffany made the long trip down, down the living room stairs. When they reached the bottom, Annabelle took Tiffany's hand and said, 
as softly as she was able. Tiffany nodded. The girls began to tiptoe to the bed in case the captain might be nearby. They took a long route around the room, walking along a little path between the wall and the edge of the rug. When they drew near to the old sweater, Annabelle stood still and peered at it. Can you see anything, whispered Tiffany? Not much. So they went all around the edge of the room. They didn't zip across the middle where the captain might find them, see them, right? The girls stepped a bit closer. How about now, said Tiffany. No, not yet. They tiptoed, cl they tiptoed closer. Suddenly, Annabelle grabbed Tiffany's arm. He's there. The captain is right there. It was all Annabelle could do not to shriek. Tiffany leaned forward. Then she did something that astounded Annabelle. She ran to the edge of the sweater and kicked at it. Nothing happened. She kicked again. Nothing. She, he, he couldn't be there, Tiffany announced. He would have, he, he would have felt something for sure. I think it was, I just saw a shadow, Annabelle. Come on, let's explore the sweater. Cautiously, the girls crawled onto the sweater. Tiffany had been right. The captain wasn't there. For five long minutes, the girls felt around in the dark. Annabelle found the cow and the chicken again, but not the little doll. Tiffany found the mouse and wanted to take it back to the dream house with her, but Annabelle told her not to. Then Tiffany found a plastic house that Annabelle thought had come from Kate's Monopoly game. But after several minutes, they still had not found Papa doll. Are we sure he isn't here, said Annabelle, poking in the sweater with her foot. Pretty sure, said Tiffany. I'm sorry, Annabelle. And so here is the sweater with all the stuff in it and the girls looking around, looking closely to see if they can find Papa doll. Annabelle looked at her feet. She didn't say anything. Well, we haven't searched everywhere, said Tiffany. We can't give up yet. He could even be in the attic with Auntie Sarah, I guess. If we go to the attic, we might find both of them at once. After a long pause, Annabelle said, I don't know. She paused again. What? What are you thinking, asked Tiffany. I just have a feeling that Papa isn't in the attic. Wherever he is, I don't think the Palmers go to it very often, and I'm pretty sure the captain can't get into it by himself, so I don't think he took Papa there in the middle of the night when the Palmers were asleep. I guess he could have taken him later, but probably not. So you think your father is somewhere else in the house? Yes, somewhere we haven't searched yet or somewhere that we can't get to. Then we just have to keep searching. I know. I guess I was hoping it would be easier in this. I wanted Selm to do a really great job. I wanted us to find Papa snap like that and then go to the attic and find Auntie Sarah snap like that and we would be heroes, Tiffany smiled. We're going to be heroes, she said. Don't get discouraged, Annabelle. I don't think your aunt would have. She would have thought up a plan. We thought up a plan, Annabelle pointed out. We thought of searching the captain's bed, but it didn't work. So we need another plan. Annabelle and Tiffany slid off of the captain's bed and sat down under the small chest of drawers. They thought and thought. Annabelle thought until she got a little headache. At last she said, the only thing I can think of, and maybe this is really dumb because we'll have to hang around the captain, but the only thing I can think of is to follow the captain. If he's hidden Papa somewhere or dropped him somewhere, maybe he'll go back for him. Well, said Tiffany, I don't exactly want to go following the captain around, but you, but you know, Annabelle, I think you have a very good idea. I think that's exactly what we should do. When, asked Annabelle, tomorrow night. Keep, try to keep track of the captain during the day tomorrow if you see him, okay? And I'm going to stop and have this be part one.